it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you set up an auto-scaling instance group to serve web traffic for an upcoming launch. After configuring the instance group as a backend service to an HTTPS load balancer, you notice that virtual machine instances are being terminated and relaunched every minute. The instances do not have a public IP address. You have verified that the appropriate web response is coming from each instance using the curl command. You want to ensure that the backend is configured correctly. What should you do? So, this is a very important moment for your project and your company. There's a big launch coming up. You have deployed it on Google Cloud and you're noticing now that the VMs that are part of the managed instance group is automatically getting restarted every minute. We need to figure out what is the problem here and fix it. Let's consider the situation and analyze what we have. So there is an auto-scaling instance group to serve web traffic. So this will grow on demand. It will also ensure that the instances are healthy. If an instance is not healthy, it is going to restart it. So something is happening there with the instance probably being unhealthy. The instance group is a backend service to an HTTPS load balancer. This is expected. You're going to have a front end load balancer that then distributes the traffic to multiple VM instances as a part of a uh, managed instance group. However, these instances are being terminated and relaunched every minute. Every minute. So it sounds like something is being done on schedule and not random. Something is probably causing these instances to appear unhealthy, which is of course when the managed instance group will restart these VMs. In investigating, we found out that an appropriate web response is coming via the curl command. So it appears that within the network, the instances are accessible and they function correctly. One of the first questions I would ask in the situation is, is the application working? Is the application responding correctly to health checks? But now using the curl command, we have figured out that is okay. Right? So the application is functional and from within the network, we are also able to access it in the brief period that it has been up, but then it gets restarted. So something weird is happening and we need to figure out what this is. Let's look at the options that have been suggested by engineers. Option A suggests that ensure that a firewall rule exists to allow source traffic on HTTP slash HTTPS to reach the load balancer. So there is the data from the instance and from the load balancer. We are saying, is that actually functional? Is there a firewall rule that is blocking that traffic? Now, this could be a possibility. Right? However, we have figured out that we are able to use an external command like curl from within the network to access the VM instance and we are getting the correct response. So for all intents and purposes, it looks like the network is fine and the application is fine. We can't completely rule this out as a non-option. It could be the possibility that a firewall rule of some specific sort is blocking traffic between the load balancer and the um, managed instance group. But it seems unlikely because we can run an internal command that validates that the application is reachable, the VM is reachable, and it is returning the correct response. So maybe this is a uh, this is an issue, but very very unlikely. Option B suggests assign a public IP to each instance and configure firewall rule to allow the load balancer to reach the instance public IP. Now, right off the cuff, this is a bad option. We do not want to have public IP addresses or these VMs being accessible from 
the open internet. We want to keep it behind a NAT or a load balancer. So assigning a public IP to every backend instance is unnecessary and dangerous. Also, external IPs are paid for. You pay a price for every external IP that you allocate and use. So you don't want many of them. What you ideally want is one public facing IP and all the others are private IPs that you don't have to pay for. Also, the issue is not that the load balancer can't reach the instance. If curl can, the load balancer also should be able to. So this again, like option A, is probably not the right option. Option D suggests create a tag on each instance with the name of the load balancer. Configure a firewall rule with the name of the load balancer as a source and the instance tags as the destination. Here again, we're focusing on the load balancer reaching the instance. And this is very similar to option A. But for us, that's most likely a non-issue because we are able to reach it using curl internally within the network at least. Moreover, we don't have to tag every instance within the, VM, uh, within the managed instance group because the managed instance groups take care, takes care of connecting the load balancer with all the instances uh, within it. We don't have to additionally tag it. That becomes unnecessary. The other thing we haven't considered is in all of these options, what is triggering the restart? In looking if there is a firewall problem that is connecting the load balance in an instance, maybe the traffic would inflow. But why would that cause the instance to get restarted? So there's something else that is not covered by these options so far. Moving on to the final option, let's see. It suggests that we ensure that a firewall rule exists to allow the load balancer health checks to reach the instances in the instance group. What is being suggested here is that the issue is not the connection between the load balancer and the instance, but from a health check and the instance. The key thing to know here is that the health check requests are not issued from the load balancer. It is not coming from the IP address of the load balancer. Instead, there are these software, I guess, called probers that run within Google Cloud. And you can understand this if you look at the site reliability engineering um, material and books. So these probers keep sending health checks to the VM instances. And these are software running on other instances that have specific published IPs. So if you look at the documentation, you'll find the IP addresses from which these probers are going to issue those health checks. Now, if the prober cannot connect to the managed instance group, then the prober says, oh, you know what? I'm not able to reach it. Therefore, the machine must be unhealthy. I'm not getting a positive response from the instance and therefore it must be unhealthy and it instructs the managed instance group therefore to terminate that VM and restart it. Since the entire managed instance group is blocked by this firewall rule that should ideally have been open between the prober and this managed instance group and the machines there, all machines are going to be marked unhealthy every time they come up. They come up, the prober sends a request, it's not able to do it, it marks it unhealthy and the managed instance group terminates it and then restarts it. That behavior seems to match exactly with what we are witnessing when we look, picked up this requirement. And therefore, since it matches all those uh, points here, we can be sure that option C is the right answer to this question. The way to solve this therefore would be to ensure that a firewall rule exists to allow health checks to reach the instances. And these health checks come from specific IPs, uh, from, specific, uh, from special software called probers that check for the health of the instances. If you thought that content was great, you absolutely must check out all our new upcoming content. So subscribe right away. Thank you.